and upon her forehead a name was written, History, Babylon the Gate. The Uh, in the Bible, we all can see easily that there are two lines. One is of life and the other of death. So we could say in the Bible there is the life line and there is also the death line. Because in this universe, there are two sources. One is God, and the other is the devil, Satan. Of these two sources, there are two elements. Then there will be two issues at the end of these two lines. In the very beginning of the Bible, you see there are two trees the tree of life and the tree of knowledge issuing in death, right? Then, through all the Bible, these two lines go through to the end of the book. At the end of the Bible, you have the New Jerusalem there, and you have also the Great Babylon which eventually goes to the lake of fire. I believe this is more than clear to our understanding. Now, we have to see oneness is in the line of life. Out of God and issues in the new Jerusalem. Amen. Then, division, where is it? Surely you cannot line it up with uh, the line of life, right? Division is of the line of uh, death. That is of uh, Satan. And that issues in Babylon, eventually going into the lake of fire. I feel this is very, very basic. When we would talk about the great truths of oneness, surely we have to see these two lines. Then we know where is the oneness and where belongs the division. I have to say such a word of truth. The people, I mean the Christians, who are careless to some extent concerning the matter of division, all because that they didn't see this seriousness with these two lines. Don't consider to have a division is a light thing, is a small thing. No, it is not light. It is neither small, it is too, too serious. It is a matter of life or death. To remain in oneness, this means what? This means you remain in life to get into division. And this indicates that you are getting into debt. Okay, I'd like to uh, just set up these two lines in front of your understanding. I'd like to impress your understanding with these two lines. Now, let's get into uh, the details concerning the issue of oneness. Last night, we have seen the essence 
of oneness. And the essence of oneness is just life and light. Now, what is the issue of division? The issue of division is firstly Babel, then Babylon, eventually the great Babylon. Don't forget, in this universe, our God has only four acts. The act of the old creation, the act of his election, and the act of his new creation, and eventually the act of his new universe. When we come to the new universe, you have to see the other source, the source other than God, which its element and with its issue all have been by that time what? Or will have been. But according to the Bible, we have to say all have been. All have been cast into the lake of fire. So in a new universe of God, I tell you, there will be no other source with its element and with its issue. In the new heaven and new earth, there will be only one source. That is God himself. So you could see in that new, new, new universe, in new heaven, new earth, there will be no more division. You know, in that new universe, a number of no mores. No more weeping. No more tears. No more death. No more pain. No more night. And you have to say also, no more what? No more division. No more sin. No more flesh. No more self. No more I. No more word nice, no more debt, no more division. No more, no more, no more. No more, no more. Amen. Only God. Amen. No more Satan. All the negative things should be no more there. Amen. No longer any kind of the negative things will be there in the new heaven, new earth. So what? So there will be no division. I have to say, you have to see, division is a matter of all-inclusive. Division includes, let me tell you, includes Satan. You just can't. Division includes Satan. Division includes sin. Division includes worldliness. Division includes uh, uh, the flesh, uh, the self, uh, the old man, the I. Division includes all negative things. It includes your bad temper. It includes your opinion. I'm not joking. If you would get into the light of division, you could see every bit of negative thing is included in division. You should consider. Don't think division stands by itself. And here's the self, and there's division. And these two are not related, one to another. No, no, not in that way. Division not only is related to every negative thing, but also includes every negative thing. I just like to repeat again and again to impress you that division is all inclusive. In the same principle, we all have to see oneness is also all inclusive. Oneness includes God. Oneness includes Christ. 
Oneness includes the spirit. Am I right? You may check with me. Brother, it is upon why you say this. Ephesians 4. In that oneness there, you have God, the Father, you have Christ the Lord, and you have the Spirit, the life giver. Right? Then what? Then oneness includes your good temper. <laughs> right? And oneness includes your regenerated spirit. And oneness includes your transformed mind. Whatever is positive, I tell you, is included in oneness. And whatever is negative in, is included in division. Eventually, I tell you, the new Jerusalem is the ultimate consummation of oneness, and lake affair is the ultimate reservoir of all oh, negativity. That is the eternal Dead Sea. The lake of fire is the eternal Dead Sea. It contains all the negativity. <clears throat> I don't like to get too much far, but I have to tell you, in every house, nearly in every good building, there is a trash can. I tell you, even in the new, world, new universe, new heaven, new earth, there will be a trash can there. <laughs> Outside of the new Jerusalem, the new holy city, there is a trash can. Do you know the name of that trash can? What's the name? The lake of fire. You know, most of these trash cans smell because there's no fire there. But the eternal trash can burns. It doesn't smell. It smokes. But anyhow, <laughs> please tell me where division will go. To the New Jerusalem? No. On what street? What's the address of division in the New Jerusalem? You have to say, there's not such a street. In the New Jerusalem, there will be only one street. The street of what? Life. The street of life. Because huh, in the street, along the street, is the river of the water of life that grows the tree of life. So the name of that street must be the street of life. Life street. And on the life street, there couldn't be any division. A whole division should be in the burning trash can. This is not a joke. Brothers, okay, I still like to uh, uh, see the first issue of division. And the first issue of division was Babel. Babel is mentioned in Genesis 11, but you have to trace back how Babel came out. And from what Babel was there? How Babel came out? And from what Babel was there? I tell you, Babel came out of the tree of knowledge. The source of Babel was the tree of knowledge. Suppose Adam and all his descendants would never, would never eat the tree of knowledge. Do you believe there could be a Babel? Impossible. I tell you, in chapter 3 of Genesis, man took the tree of knowledge into him. 
Then you could see right away next chapter, chapter four of Genesis, what came out, murdering. Before murdering, hatred. Cain hated his brother Abel. Then he murdered him. And then in the same chapter, you could see polygamy came in. What is polygamy? Fornication. Am I right? Then in the same chapter, you could see the weapons came in. The weapons were invented. Weapons for what? For fighting. All these basic evils came in. Hatred, murder, fornication, polygamy, fighting, war, all the things came in. Right? Then in chapter 6, Maya, the whole mankind became flesh and became corrupted. And then after that, even after the judgment of the flood, man's nature was not changed. Right? Then <laughs> it came to chapter 11. Man was not only, I tell you, hating each other, fighting each other, committing sins one with another. Not only so, man came to a point trying to fight against God. They were trying to build a tower to the heaven to rebel against God. To make themselves a name. Then what? I tell you. Then the issue was division and confounding. Division and confusion were the issue of that kind of a rebellious life. And that was Babel. Am I right? Mankind was no longer one. Mankind was divided by their what? Their sins. Mankind was divided by their sinfulness, by their evils. Not only so, I must add one thing. History tells us that at the city of Babel and at the tower, tower of Babel and all the bricks full of the names of idols. And uh, Joshua 24 tells us when Abraham was there before he was called, he was worship idols there in Chaldea. Now you can see division is a great container contains, containing all these evil things. Hatred, murder, polygamy, fornication, fighting, war, corruption, am I right? Rebellion against God and idols. Then what is the result? What is the result? Division. Confusion. Division, confusion. And this is the very meaning, the very significance of Babel. <clears throat> then, God gave up that generation. God gave up mankind. God gave up the uh, race of Adam. The Adamic race was abandoned by God. But God would not give up his eternal purpose with men. So God came in, in his mercy, to appear to one of those fallen people, Abraham. And God called him out of that environment. And he became God's election. 
Am I right? He became God's election. Again, God has kept his nature in the matter of oneness. He selected, called one man into his election. And God tried this man, right? And God promised this man, and God was with this man. I make the story short. And eventually, this man was very much blessed that he had thousands and thousands of descendants. And all the descendants, the children of Israel, came out of Egypt, and God charged them to enter into the gold land. And after they entered into it, they shouldn't exercise any kind of choice any kind of selection, any kind of preference, they must bow down to God and humble themselves before God to take God's preference, to take God's choice. We all know this. So by this one unique place, probably we'll see this tomorrow morning, uh, tomorrow night, by this one unique place of God's Choice. All the children of Israel, all the descendants of Abraham were kept one. And among them, it is so interesting, there was a place of God's choice. If you have ever been to the uh, Holy Land, you could see, my, that among them was really something marvelous. Even geographically speaking, it was marvelously located. If you like to have a tour in your vacation, I would encourage you to go to see in that mountain. <laughs> On that mountain, mountain, there was a temple built. And in that temple, there was a little oracle. And by this time, it became a little ha a bigger, bigger than that, the tabernacle. I tell you, that mountain with that temple and with that oracle, the Holy of Holies, uh, was the very center of the oneness of God's people. It was that center that kept all the children of Israel, God's chosen people, all the time one. Listen, for one day, division happened. You know the story. There was a division in King, First King, chapter 11. There was a division. The nation was divided into two. And the people were divided into two nations. Jeroboam, he became the king of the northern nation. In chapter 12, our first king, which we read tonight, Jeroboam, ha -ha, not only Cause division. Listen, once division comes, you know what will come? Idol follows. Do you know where idol comes? Idol comes from the selfishness. Idol comes from selfish ambition. You read First King twelve. And these verses, 26 through 30, Jeroboam, Jeroboam said, ha ha, ha, he must set up another center of worship. Otherwise, he would have lost his kingdom for his selfishness, for his self-ambition. He need to set up Another center of worship with some idols. 
brothers, we shouldn't read a portion of the Holy Word and understand it as for granted. No, we have to apply the principles to our today's situation. You know, why divisions in the church come in? Why divisions are there in Christianity? Because of man's self. Because of man's selfishness. Because of man's ambition. Because of man's ambition to have empire. To have a kingdom. So you see, man's ambition to have a kingdom for man's selfishness I tell you, just neglect God's choice. God's choice was of one unique place, Mount Zion, with Jerusalem, with the temple, with the oracle, the holy of holies. Now is a man, ambitious man, a man who is so ambitious, so selfish, so much for his, himself, so much for his interest, so he set up another place for worship. Apparently, you could say, he didn't set up a theater. He didn't set up a kind of a movie theater. He set up a center to worship God. Isn't this today's pretense? Right? Today, not only another center, you have to say another thousand centers. And these centers are now increasing. Increasing here and there, here and there. You see? Eventually, today, in a city like, like, like Los Angeles, no need to say Los Angeles, even here in Anaheim, you may have a street of worship center market. <laughs> the other day, a young brother uh, drove us through a street in Anna. He said, Brother Lee, you know, on this one street, four churches. I said, this is a market of the church. Church market. Right? Another center, another center, another center, another center, so many centers. Why? For what purpose? Why? Because of man's ambition. Man's selfishness. Am I right? Today, you may say every founder of any Christian group is a Jeroboam. Jeroboam. To set up a center of worship. Actually, that is not a center of worship. That is a center of ambition. So, idols are there. Brothers and sisters, I say again, we all have to see through this kind of a portion of the word in the Bible that according to principle, in every Christian group, there is a kind of a idol. Idol to attack people, to keep people away from God. A kind of idol pretending to be God. You know what Jeroboam did? He made two calves. He followed the example of Aaron at uh, Mount Sinai. At Mount Sinai, Aaron built two calves. 
or one, I couldn't remember so well, but now a golden calf was built. Now Jeroboam followed him to build two calves and told the people, oh, children of Israel, this is the very God that led you out of Egypt. Today, you may say, you are very clear that those calves were idols. Why the children of Israel would be, would, would be that blind, not seeing that they were idols? I tell you, <laughs> when you see things far off, you are easy to be clear. Yeah, exactly. But I tell you, at that day, if you were there, you would have followed Jeroboam. You would be one with him. You see, today, if you have the heavenly sight, if you would go to the heavenly mountain and look down at the situation of today's Christianity, you could see, my goodness, every Christian grove has an idol. At least one idol. Something pretending to be God. Something replacing God to attract people. Something replacing God to keep people. What is this? This is the idol. This is the idol. Am I right? I hope this is clear. But now, listen. As we have pointed out already, division includes every evil. Let me uh, illustrate. I hope I can do it quite well, but not so easy. Look at the picture. Among the children of Israel in ancient time, there was God's house among them, the temple. God stayed there. God all the time was speaking out of that little room, the Holy of Holies, which was God's oracle, the place of the divine speaking. <sighs> Whosoever loves to go to that place, listen, you know, in Psalm 27, there is a kind of a deep, aspiration. Oh, I long to remain in the house of God, to behold his face. Something like this, right? And then Psalm 84, it says, I like to be doorkeeper of the house of God. No need to say to get into the Holy of Holies, even at the gate. To be keeper there, standing there, I'll be satisfied. Right? Then Psalm 36. Huh? You can see it, the aspiration of those godly ones who loved that temple, the house of God. Right? And you also have other Psalms, even Psalm 23. Right? Psalm the shepherd. And the psalmist goes to the temple, to the house of God. I shall live in the house of God forever and ever. Am I right? The point of this, all those godly ones who aspired to be there in the temple with God's presence. Don't you realize? Just such an aspiration repels all evil. Just such a desire to be with God, I tell you, this repels your hatred. Am I right? Repels the fornication. And this desire makes you holy. Makes you pious. 
makes you godly, then eventually what? Then eventually you are one with God's children. Could you see this? You just consider. Let me tell with you, do you all believe that suppose you and I, David and Milton, and this David, you fall come here. Or you just illustrate a little bit. You fall come here. We five brothers, I'm quite old, and these two are quite young. We all love the temple. We all love Zion. Amen. We all love the Holy of Holies. Amen. We all love that card. Amen. We all love, don't you? Amen. I love right? Amen. Okay. Amen. Suppose we all we get there. My, Amen. we enjoy. Amen. We enjoy that temple. Amen. We enjoy that Holy of Holies. We enjoy the presence of God. Amen. We would sing. Psalm 133. Amen. Probably morning, evening, day, and night. Amen. I tell you, such a kind of desire, such a kind of aspiration repels what? The hatred. Do you believe while we will be singing Psalm 133 and I will hate you? And Milton will look down at this old man. Do you believe? Impossible. It's impossible. I tell you, this oneness, this oneness includes every good attribute, every good virtue, divine and human. Just this oneness, this oneness, I tell you, will keep all the virtues. Not only so, this oneness will, <laughs> what? Will hold God's presence to our situation. My, while we will be singing Psalm 133, God's presence is here. Amen. And our oneness holds God's presence Amen. to our situation. What is this? I tell you, this is oneness. Here is the blessing commanded by God even life forevermore. Amen. I tell you, this is oneness. Am I right? <laughs> One day, <laughs> this Milton got mad. He would say, I don't like this David. I don't like the other David. I don't like that old man. I got disgusted with that old man. If they were there at the temple, I would never be there. I would go our way. And he went our way. You just think about, you just think about, right after he left us. Maybe I'm not so good. This old man, maybe not so good. And this young boy, maybe not so pleasant. And Dave, maybe a little rough. <laughs> I don't know. And he even too tough. So what? So this little Milton, he just doesn't like us. He just wouldn't stay with us. We, we may be so, but you have to realize where we are. Yeah. We are where? You say it. You all say it. We are in the house of God. Yeah. We are among them. Yeah. Sorry, this disgusting old man is 
and met Diana. And this, this rough one is a man down. Amen. And this tough one is also a man down. Amen. And this what? I don't know what can one is. <laughs> but but anyhow, we all are a man down. Amen. You may be mad with us, but don't be mad with man down. Right. You have to realize we are among them. Yeah. If you leave us and you go away, go away from us, you go away from where? From among them. Okay, Milton left. Right away after he left, I tell you what will fill him up. What? Proud, pride. No more humility. Pride, hatred, criticism, despising, defaming, even rumors, lies, will fill him up. Then eventually, he still likes to pretend that he is with God. He will set up. <laughs> What? A vessel. A worship center. Then another worship center. Could you see? Now all evil things came in. Even idol. Am I right? Thank you, brothers. I just illustrate this way. I tell you, if you would read the kings, first kings and second kings, the chronicles, you could see sins, the sin, sin of division brought into the people of God by Jeroboam. Sins dead. All kinds of sins came in. The division was the open gate for all evils to come. Fornication, idol worship, evil things, all things came in. I tell you, eventually what? Eventually, the children of Israel came into a condition that was described in uh, Second Chronicle 36. The high priest, all the people, they did every evil. And that caused what? That caused uh -huh, the king, Nebuchadnezzar, a Babylon to come. He came to plunder. I'm right. To plunder the children of Israel at least three times. Have you noticed? He carried away three kings. And eventually, he carried away all the precious vessels from the temple and brought them over to Babylon and put them into his idol temple. And the last time, he burned Jerusalem. And he tore down the temple. And he carried away all the people. I tell you, this was the issue of what? This was the issue of division. And the issue of division was just captive into Babylon. Oneness was there in Jerusalem, but the division brought people into Babylon. With all evils, my dear ones, you just apply the principle to today's situation. I tell you, I can tell you not only cases in the USA, from the Far East to the South Sea, Southeastern countries, the Philippines, Malaysia, Indonesia, Thailand, Hong Kong, I tell you, Taiwan, 
Everywhere I was, I saw some cases. What cases? Let me say this. So many among us, before we came into the church life, we were loose. We were loose, right? Before you came into the recovery, you were loose. You did everything what you lacked. You did everything that you lacked, right? You were loose. But the good thing is this, we all can testify, since the day you step into the recovery, the next day, your conscience began to work very well, <laughs> right? Then you would not do this, and you would not do that. Huh. Then day after day, a lot of things will be what? Will be put off. There is a big putting off all the time continued, right? That was the story of coming into the recovery. But I also can tell you some vice versa story. Once a person who is disgusted with the church life, I left the church life. I tell you, from that day, the conscience began to lose its function. Whatever was dropped by the coming in in the church life, every beat gradually all will come back. Not only in this country, in other countries, I saw the same thing. Oh, wilderness came back. Theater came back. Movie came back. All these makeups came back. All modern things, modern fashion came back. Christmas came back. Party came back. Even idols came back. Sports came back. Entertainment came back. I saw this. So I say, oneness keeps us from every bit of evil. Yeah. And division opens the gate for all evils. In 1941, two, in those few years, among us, I was in my hometown. In that church, I saw a young girl of a top rich family, modern girl, who got high education. One day, she was brought into the meeting. My you could see all the wilderness, evils built up upon that young girl. Her hair was built just like a tower. <laughs> <laughs> At least three or four stories. <laughs> and he did that purposely. Eventually, he told me he did that purpose as he can protest. See, on every story of her hair, something there. Some fancy things there. She came in. She was so striking sitting there. <laughs> I was speaking. No need for me to look at it. She was so striking. The good thing was that the next day she came in. The high tower was cut off. <laughs> <laughs> Not four stories. If I remember well, it became two stories. 
When I saw that, I began to be happy. I realized something happened. Then after that, every day, one lower down. <laughs> after three, four days, no tower. But still a lot of colors on her face. I, I noticed after a few days, every day some color was gone. After a few days, just a genuine and natural face came out. All the makeups were gone. I didn't pray the gospel. I didn't talk about the high towers. I didn't talk about the makeups. I was teaching the truth there. Loving Christ, loving the church, and so forth. I tell you, not more than 10 days. That young girl was fully cleared up. Even her dress was changed. Fully curled up. Who told him her? No one regulated her. Just when she came into the touch of the church, I tell you, her conscience began to work. In the ancient time, when the children of Israel, if any one of them got wrong with the temple, I tell you, that was serious. That wrong with the temple would open the gate for all evil to come in. When one was wrong with the temple, you have to realize, surely he was in division. Could you follow me? Right. All the children of Israel, by that time, should be right with the temple. The temple is the center of the oneness. When everyone was right with the temple, everyone was in the oneness. And that oneness, I tell you, keeps him or her in all good virtues, in all good attributes, even in God's presence, even in the godliness. I tell you, that is life forevermore. But when anyone that is wrong with the temple, and this dear one was what? Divided. Was separated from the children of God. That was a division. And this division opened the gate ever bit of evil to come in. Today, many Christians would talk about holiness, victory over sin, and spirituality. I tell you, look at the picture of the children of Israel. Their holiness, their victory over sin, their spirituality was not upon their doing. Their holiness, their victory of evil things, their spirituality was with the temple. When they were right with the temple, when they were right with the holy of holies, when they were right with the ark, every good thing is there, was theirs. They don't need to try to be holy. Holiness was theirs. They don't need to try to live a kind of victorious life, the victory of, over sin was theirs. This is why so many Christians today talking about victory, 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 eventually, no victory but defeat. If you are wrong with the church, don't think you have victory. Impossible. If you are wrong with Christ, with the ark, don't think you can have any holiness. Impossible. 
Holiness is just Christ in the church. Holiness is just the ark in the temple. You have to be right with the ark in the temple. You have to be right with Christ in the church, then holiness is yours. This is why we have to see the oneness. Uh -huh. Oneness gives us all good virtues, all good attributes, and the division opens up the gate of all evil things. In this year, haven't you seen all these things? The strange thing is, especially when I was on the mainland of China, I was not the target. I was under the umbrella of Brother Lee, who was the target. All the arrows went to him. All the attacks went to him, and all the attackers were the same, saying Brother Lee was wrong. The church was wrong, and the elders were wrong. Everybody was wrong. Uh, when the first time I heard this kind of thing, or I saw this kind of thing, I was hesitating to see maybe, maybe Brother Nee was wrong. And maybe the church was wrong. And maybe the elders were not so right the first time. But case after case, I realized it was not so. It was not so. I tell you, eventually I found out every attacker of the church, every attacker of Brother Nee, and every attacker of the elders, as they all said that Brother Nee was wrong, the church was wrong, and the elders were not right, then they themselves should be right. But I tell you, none of them would be right. They attacked people supposedly to be wrong, but they were even more wrong. I never saw an attacker of the church goes up. Every attacker of the church right away the next morning goes down. I don't believe, I cannot believe you could see an attacker of the church going up. Probably you can point out this one, that one, this one, this one, here and there, or many places. All the attackers of the church have been going down. Right. 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 Some would say they still love the church. And they still love all the Christians. And they still love God. They still love the Lord. They still love this and love that. Eventually, they love nothing. Right. You know this story. So, we all have to see, brothers and sisters, what can contain us? What can retain us? What can reserve us? Oneness. Oneness. I assure you, oneness. As long as you remain in oneness, everything is okay. Everything is okay. As long as you remain in oneness, everything is okay. If you jump out of oneness, you get in division, the gates are open for all kinds of evils. The ants, the mosquitoes, the frogs, the flies, the dogs, the cats, all evil things will come in to visit you. You believe me. The hatred. The despising. Am I right? The jealousy. All evil things will come in. Eventually, fornication. Accompanied with idol worship. All these things will come in. Eventually what? Eventually you are where? Babylon. You've been fully captured into Babylon.
In the Old Testament, you could see all evils were there in Babylon. Now we come to the New Testament. Have you seen in Revelation chapter 17, it is a short chapter. If I remember well, it is just 17 verses. I tell you, in those 17 verses, you could see all the evils. All the evils. Yet, all the evils are concealed under a gold appearance. And the appearance is gold, right? Gold, precious stone, and pearl. But underneath, all fornication, all filthy thing, there, concealed. And uh, the one who was conducting such an evil thing is a great whore, a great harlot, the mother of all the whores. And she holds a golden cup. Listen, the cup is golden. Something of God. But with tin, fails in it. And this is today's Christendom, including this and that. Am I right? They still have the name of God. They still have the name of Christ. They still have the Bible. They still hold the golden cup. But what is within? Idolatry and adultery and all kinds of evils. Hatred, rumors, defaming, jealousy, pride, all kinds of evils. Am I right? This is the very composition of division. And division eventually simply issues consummately in this great Babylon. In the eyes of God, this great Babylon is the great whole. The most evil woman and she has a lot of daughters. I tell you, brothers, the whole Christianity situation is like this. Am I right? Do you, do you think or do you feel I'm defaming? I'm not giving you some report, some information. You are here. Probably you know all the de details much more than I do. The whole Christianity is a big division. Am I right? And in this big division, you have all kinds of evils. Spiritual fornication, even physical fornication. The worship of idols, spiritual idols, physical idols, all kinds of idols. All kinds of evils in Babylon. This is the issue of division. I haven't finished my illustration. I mentioned whenever a person turned to the recovery and stepped into the church, all negative things began to be put aside. And here and there, I saw so many cases. When they left the church, right away, not too long, just after one or two weeks, I saw them. All the things they dropped nearly all came back. All the evil things they dropped all came back. Don't consider 
Division is a small thing. To be divisive is a light thing. Don't concentrate this way. You have to realize the most terrible thing, a terrifying thing, is the thought of division. If the enemy Satan could inject just a little bit thought of division, he's okay. He is okay. And this thought will undermine your whole Christian life. It is just like the termite. The thought of division, just like the termite, a little bit, just one little termite. I tell you, eventually, we eat up the whole structure of your house. Now, could we have a conclusion? When we are in the oneness, we are in life. And we are in all the riches. And we are in all the good virtues. And we are in all the divine attributes. We are okay. Am I right? Amen. If not right now, but how do now, it is getting on right. and on gradually. Right. We are on the way. Up, up. Right? right. But once we left the oneness and we get into the division, I say there's no need for it to get into division. Just a little thought of division gets into you. This little sound opens up the gate right. of evil things to come. I did see physical divorce, physical fornication, physical separation just because of the division in the church. Everyone that is remaining in the oneness, uh, that is kept in the oneness, is kept from what? Separation, divorce, fornication. Anyone that would think to be divisive, just a little sound of division, division gets into you. This sound may cause you to prefer separation, to have a divorce even to have a fornication. I saw all this. Don't think, oh, don't talk about the church of ground. Let just about talk about holiness. I tell you, if you leave the church of ground, there's no holiness. If you remain or if you are getting into division, I tell you, you'll be prepared. Separation will be yours. Divorce will be yours. Fornication you will come in. And all the evil things will come in. Don't think the church ground is not a matter of life. No, no. It is the base of life. It is the element of life. It is the essence of life. So, to remain in oneness is a great thing. And to get into division is a terrible thing. The whole Christianity loses God's blessing and misses God's grace just because the whole Christianity is divisive. So we must be what? Warned. We must be warned. We must not repeat the history of devotion. Oh, how we look to the Lord that he would keep us in his oneness. Oh, we say hallelujah for the oneness. And we are just afraid of the division. Even we are fearful to have any sort of divisiveness. May the Lord keep us in his presence by, being, by keeping us in this oneness. Amen. Now, let's try some of you, even many of you, will give some testimony to confirm this message.
If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe. Follow us on social media or visit our website for more from Living Stream Ministry.